Okay, you guys, welcome. It's Monday. It's August 16th. We are officially at the halfway mark of the month. And I feel like we need this call tonight now more than ever, mostly because you get to hear from someone who is not me, who is in our organization, who is an amazing coach. And it's just really great to get different perspectives because no one runs their business the same way and no one has had the same journey that we have had. So in the whole purpose of tonight's call, you'll get you, some of you might already know Samantha, I will give her a proper introduction in just a moment. First thing we're gonna do is quick announcements and then we will turn the time over to our Q and A kind of back and forth. The one thing I want you guys to take out of tonight you're on live for a reason. You got yourself here. So please, I'm sure Samantha will welcome it. Ask questions. You guys give her feedback in the comments. See if something that she shares is a good idea for you too. Like this, the more interactive we can be, we're going to have some time at the end for some Q&A that you might have um, thought of something while she's sharing. Write it down. Write it down in the chat. Let's have a conversation. Let's get someone else's perspective who has had insane amounts of months in Success Club um, and growing her team. Okay, are we ready to jump in? I am so excited you guys are here. We have quick recognition. As always, you guys get to recognize yourselves, right? So every Monday in Team Glow around two or three o'clock Eastern time, I put up a little post that says, hey, what do you wanna be recognized for? And I want y'all to take advantage of that. I think so often we're hard on ourselves, like, oh, last week didn't go according to plan. Does anything ever go according to plan? Can you celebrate anything? We'll do it because where our focus goes, energy flows. So I found myself in total honesty, having a little pity party that I am doing a whole bunch of work in August and August can be challenging. And I had to really step back and be like, you know what? I'm going to go ring the bell for people because I totally forgot to ring the bell for a couple of people that got on Shakeology. They didn't order on HD. So it didn't count for success club points, but that's okay. I'm still helping someone fuel their bodies. And that's something that I'm recognizing. So I had to flip the switch in my own mind too. So right now, I think it's just Tessa and Amanda and myself who recognize themselves, but you can go in the chat right now and shout yourself out for something. I love what they said though. Tessa is recognizing not quitting when times get tough and four weeks down of 75 hard. I mean, you guys doing 75 hard are my heroes. That's amazing. Amanda, I had to throw in there that Amanda is officially a team builder on the road to elite. If you don't know what that means, that's just huge. It means she's reached some leadership points and milestones in her own business. She is growing her team. She is also, of course, hitting her success club goals non-negotiably every month. So I wanted to shout her out for team builder, but Amanda is also celebrating herself with holding her diamond strong. Her paycheck she's earning, give her one step closer to making her dreams a reality. Here's the crazy part. This is how much of a beast Amanda is. She is extending 75 hard to 90 days to complete 645 with it. She is at the top of her game mentally in her words, which is so, so awesome to hear. And I am recognizing myself for staying. What did I even say? staying strong. And it's just such a, a lesson in trusting the seeds that we plant, right? So I know that things are going to come to fruition. I have like this calm fire about me that like, yeah, I know I'm going to get to my non-negotiable goals. Yeah. I wish it would happen right now, but no, I trust the process. And I know that I'm doing what I need to do to make sure that I reach my goals no matter what. And I'm not leaving it till the 30th or 31st and then panic sweat and go message everyone. I'm working right now. Like it's August 31st. That is my urgency. I had a weekend of harmony. I am back on it. Let's freaking go. That's my mentality. And I think if you guys would like come live with me for a month, you would see that. Like I talk about it, Brian, my armpits start to sweat. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's the, here we go. Like, what can I do? Because that's how much this is non-negotiable for me. Like I am going to grow my team and I am going to help more people. So I got to get creative. I got to talk to more people and I got to bring more urgency and excitement to my conversations without bringing it like anxiety and white knuckling this. Like I have to reach my goals, right? Cause I will, I can let go and I can know that I can reach my goals. Okay. So if you have not shouted yourself out yet, please shout yourself out in the comments. 31 strong. If you guys are in 31 strong, that is our coach challenge of the month. And I saw there's a lot, there's a lot of questions going on this morning when I got to the chat, just to recap, you do not have to write down the names of people you're connecting with. If you don't want to, can you sure if that's a way that like you track people and follow-ups and stuff, I just do a tally because I make sure I'm getting my non-negotiables are at least 25 days a week. Um, and all you have to do is tally them. That's it. However, I do ask that you write down the names of people you actually invite because then you can have a clear picture for your own goals 
Am I doing enough to move this business forward so I reach my goals realistically this month? Okay. What I did was I took away everyone's negative points because I'm going to revamp some stuff in September. So if you had any negative points, you now have zero. You're welcome. If you have positive points, I didn't take them away. So right now we have in third place Team Rocket with 13 points. Here's where it's really close, you guys. Team Diamond, 61, and Team Sunflower, 65. So that's just based on the emojis that you chose. You have two weeks, and then the winning team, whoever achieves success club on the winning team will get a little something, something from me. So again, once again, negative points are wiped away. It doesn't mean you don't show up to calls. It doesn't mean you don't do your tracker. Just know like you got to put forth your best effort and to not let these negative points like get within your head mentally. That's why I just deleted them. You're fine. I can do it. It's my team page. I can do what I want, right? Let's go on to announcements and then we'll be ready to hear from Samantha. Um, okay, so real quick, you guys, this week is our join the coach movement. I really want you to lean in and at least see what this is about. Read the posts, see what I put up there because I'm gonna be offering that every other week from here on out until I decide to change my mind. I might change my mind in a month, I don't know. But I do know that we need to bring more people into this business with the mission of let's help one more person, right? Because I think a lot of y'all are at a standstill of, I don't have any business builders. I have the same four coaches and no one's really doing anything and I feel stuck. Well, sure, we wanna reach our success club goals and help more people. But if we're not also growing this tribe of people that want to pay it forward, we're going to feel pretty stuck, right? We might be able to eke out helping three new people a month, but if we don't take that next step and really ask people to join this movement with us, you're going to feel like you're on an island on your own team of discount coaches, okay? So the whole point of this join this glow movement is that we can have something to invite people to. And I would simply frame it as not asking someone to be a coach, but do you want to learn more about our mission on our team, which is help one person? Because you know what happens when someone helps one person? They start to believe they can help too, right? So instead of framing it as try coaching, coach info session, join the GLOW movement, okay? So at least please be in that Facebook group. A couple of coaches, I've asked you guys to go live throughout this week and just share your coach stories. But every day this week is a post from me and it's a simple task. Today was putting up a sweaty selfie of themselves on their social media. That was it right? Tomorrow is let's message those people that say, like that post and say, thank you. Wednesday, I think is add 10 friend requests. Um, it's just little things that get people actually taking action to think like, well, I thought what she does is overwhelming, but I just did it for a week and I'd like to help someone, right? In my so many years of coaching, it's extremely rare that someone has come to me wanting to build a massive business. People have transitioned to be a coach because they wanted extra accountability and they would have loved to help one more person. And then they started to believe more in it. So anyways, that is going on this week. We're going to be doing that every other week. So obviously the last Monday in August, we'll do it again. Um, and it's going to be the same group. We're just going to recycle the content. We're going to tweak it if need be with different people going live. Okay. Go back to your systems. I just have three more quick announcements. And the biggest thing is go back to your systems. Last week we talked about, Tessa shared about having a marketing plan right? So it's not this big overwhelming thing. It's what could she pre-plan to take off her plate when things got crazy during her day? So what she, for example, pre-planned was her reels and her posts for the week. I personally write my posts in the morning, right after my workout, when my brain is firing, that's when I get my post idea down. And that's been working wonders. Um, I don't prep out a whole week, but if that sounds more doable to you, do it right. Because when you have these things, you can fall back on then you can really focus in your pocket of time that you work your business on the things that are going to move your business forward. The mission producing activities, being in the inbox. And what we talked about in our team message this past week is how do I create urgency if my fit club started a week ago? Well, you don't tell people when your fit club starting or your wellness club or whatever you call it. When people are watching you and they're seeing parts of your health and fitness journey and they're here for it. I love to use the phrase, have you heard about these monthly wellness groups that I'm a part of? right? Because you don't have to say, hey, we started last week, so you're kind of late, but do you want to talk more about this? No, it's, hey, have you heard of this? Because in my experience, you're probably not going to sign up immediately. We're going to have to go back and forth, and maybe you're a follow-up next month, or maybe you're a follow-up next week, but I'm going to plant that seed of, have you heard about these things that I'm doing? And that's not a very scary invite. Inviting is something that I know we all, it's like our Achilles heel and we know we have to do more of it, but we're scared. 
personal development will help with that, but also just relaxing with, I'm not asking Susie if she wants to sign up with me right now. I'm asking her if she's heard about these groups that I run or that I'm a part of. And if she says, yeah, and I don't want any part of that. Well, thanks, Susie. Thanks for telling me up front. But if she is curious, you guys, you've opened the door in a very natural way to ask about her goals and then continue the inviting process, which of course, if you're newer, you can always reach out to your upline. And we are here to guide you through that process in a way that's very natural to you. But I will say the fortune is always in the follow-up. That's why having a list of people that have expressed interest is huge. So you can always go back and revisit because things are going to get busy. You're going to be done with your business work time for the day. They're going to have kids to pick up and the conversation is going to stop. We need that reminder to pick it up. Okay. Last announcement is success starters and success club trip. All of our fingers and toes are crossed that we're going to be able to go to Beachbody's yearly rewards trip in March in Punta Cana at the Hard Rock Cafe. And the way you get an invite is through success club. It really is the key. It really, really is helping people reaching their goals with the total solution, not only brings you income to cover your own costs and start to build up your own income with coaching, it allows you to be invited to trips. I mean, Brian and I have traveled out of the country every year, the last two years excluded because of COVID, but we've been able to go on a trip. We just had to get ourselves there. And we had an all-inclusive vacation with Beachbody that Samantha and I've gotten to go to Mexico together. I mean, we've had like such amazing experiences that I never would have had if I wasn't a part of this business. As someone who had very little growing up, we got to the beach like every other year. And that was amazing. And to be able to have a literally all inclusive paid vacation through our company is massive because travel is one of my love languages. And if you're a success starter, meaning in your first three months out of your first six months of becoming a coach, you achieve success club, helping three people, at least three of those months, you're going to, you're going to get closer to getting an invite to that rewards trip. You're also going to get a free ticket to summit 2022 in new Orleans, oh, new Orleans, what am I saying? St. Louis, our yearly convention. And you're going to get to be in a test group for an upcoming beach body program. Huge. I think new Orleans is just on my brain. I want a beignet. Okay. Are we ready for our featured speaker? We're going to do a little Q and a and Samantha, I totally should have gotten your official accolades. So you're going to have to wow everyone with the amount of months you have been in success club. Samantha is in my downline. She is personally sponsored by my coach, Sarah, and the three of us, I always joke, we kind of grew up in this business together. Sarah ran off and built this incredible team. Samantha was one of her first business building coaches who grown and really developed her own team as well. And we were kind of like these three musketeers in the beginning stages that had no idea what we were doing. We just had fun with it. But she was someone who from the beginning, she had very very focused goals in her business. She always treated this like a business, even when she was working full time. And recently we've just really started talking more and kind of banding back in together. And I cherish that, cherish that show so much because she's someone that I'm inspired by. You know, she's someone who has faced obstacles too, and has never given up on her dream of building this business. We did push elite together at the end, the second half of last year. And we kind of like rode that wave together and just really grew and developed our mindsets together. And I just am really excited to hear from her. So I very, she very generously was able to speak on the call tonight. And I really just wanted to do a casual, like back and forth with her so that you can hear from someone who's been in the business a while, does not have my path, we're different paths, right? And has success with this business. So Samantha, I, she's also one star Hi. diamond in her first business center and one star diamond in your second business center. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Could you just give, I know you're like, if I tell my story, we're going to be here for seven years. Could you just give us like Cliff's notes version of Samantha and how you came to be a coach? Oh, yes. Hi. Okay. First of all, I was sitting here looking at all you guys while Ashley was talking. This is a good looking team. <laughs> you guys are gorgeous. Um, okay. So I was in the police department for seven years. Sorry. I just moved into this house and I swear the airport flies right over my house. So like an airplane is going over my house every five minutes. Um, so I was in the police department. Okay. And I did not plan on being a police officer. That was not ever my goal. That was not ever something I dreamt of doing. What happened was, is I was in a really abusive relationship and my sister, I had just gotten out of the relationship and I was like going nowhere with my life. I was 19 years old. I was like literally going nowhere with my life. And my sister signed me up for the academy without my knowledge. So I was like, 
living with her because I just moved out of this abusive relationship, like, and, and I'm talking abusive, like choking me out, like the whole nine yards, right? I've been there, done that. Okay. So she was like my saving grace. I was living with her in her house. She had just had a brand new baby and she was like, you need to do something with your life. So she signs me up for the police department and I go through the whole thing. Don't know how I even made it through, but I did. Right. Um, don't know how I made it through the academy. Don't know how I made it through like being on the field and like doing all the crazy things that police officers do, but I did. And I remember being, um, there's two significant things that really made me realize this is not what I wanted to do for life. And one of them was my 21st birthday. I was in Vegas and I had requested the time off. I had the vacation leave. I had like gotten it all approved by the chief, everything. Right. And I get there and I'm walking the strip with my mom and my sister. I wasn't even drinking yet. Cause it was like midday. We just got there and I get a missed call from my Lieutenant. And I'm like, immediately my heart starts racing, right? Like when your boss calls you, like you're on vacation. I was like sweating. And I was like, Oh shit, what did I do? Like, what's wrong? Like, you know what I mean? I'm like two years into this. No. Yeah. Like a year and a half into it. And so I was like pretty nervous. I wasn't very comfortable yet. And he leaves me a voicemail and he basically was telling me in the voicemail that I was going to be reprimanded when I got home. Don't remember why. That's all I remember. It was just like, are you freaking kidding me? So during the rest of the 20, the, my 21st birthday in Vegas, the entire time, that's all I was thinking about. Like I could not enjoy myself. I was like worried about what was going to happen when I got home. Right. And of course, when I got home, I got reprimanded, whatever. I don't remember it. It was shitty. Um, and then the second thing that really stuck with me and was like, I cannot do this forever. Right. There was one time. And if you can imagine being a police officer with the uniform, being a woman to pee was kind of a pain. Okay. So like I had everything tucked in, I had a duty belt. I had like a, you know, radio over my shoulder. I've like everything all intertwined. Okay. And so just to pee was like a task. Okay. So I'm peeing, right. I had just sat down to pee and I get called on the radio. And of course I don't answer. I'm peeing. And it takes me a good three or four minutes to like finish peeing and like tuck it all in and put it all back on and wash my hands and get it back, like get out, out of the restroom. And as soon as I got back into the hallway, the struggle with pee, <laughs> um, I get another call on the radio and he's like, can you please come to my office? So I go to the office and they were like, when you, you know, when we call you on the radio, you need to answer. I got reprimanded for peeing, literally not even kidding you. And it was at that point where I was like, okay, I'm, I'm over this. Like, I do not want to do this anymore. And I was thinking, okay, what can I do that? Like, I won't be at the beck and call of somebody. So my options in my head were a masseuse and a personal trainer. Right. And so the personal trainer route was like, that'd be kind of cool. Like I can make my own hours. If I want to go on vacation, I just don't schedule any clients. Right. That was kind of where my mindset was already going. And so when I got invited to coaching, literally I met Sarah, who is my upline, who is Ashley's downline. There's I'm like Ashley's babe, grandbaby. Right. So she, I found her on YouTube. I friended her on Facebook. And two hours later, I was signed up to be a coach. I was like, I don't care what I need to do. Get me out of this job. I'm over it. Like, I don't want to do this anymore. So yeah, I was working full time, 60 hours a week in the police department, mandatory, if not more. I was also doing 12 credit hours in college at the time, homework. And I was also teaching Zumba classes. I think it was like three classes a week back then. Accumulative, like collectively, I was doing 82 hours a week, not like including coaching. Okay. So when somebody says I don't have time, I'm like, I don't even want to hear it. Like just, that's a bunch of BS. I don't even want to hear it. Um, and Ashley wanted me to kind of go over, like, how did I, like, what were the top things that I do or did when I was working full-time and had a really busy schedule. And I'm going to give you guys a couple tips, but it's really not about how you guys know how, like it's not hard to be a coach. It's hard to be a surgeon. It's hard to be a first responder. It is not hard to be a coach. Okay. It is not hard to send invites, get out of your freaking head. Right. Like it's hard. When I was in the police department, there was a car accident that I took and it was a fatal and I pull up and they, I was not the primary officer. Okay. And they make me try to identify this woman who was deceased on the ground in the middle of a very main road. So I'm searching the car, I'm searching 
can't find anything, right? So I go to the woman who they have already not revived. So they left her there for OMI to come pick her up, okay? She's lying on the asphalt, okay? And so I'm searching her pockets. I'm standing over a dead woman, searching her pockets. I finally find her ID and it's my friend, Emily, her mom from high school. It's a girl that I went to high school with and it's her mom. She was so dismembered and like so, just, she just looks so different that I didn't even recognize her until I saw her ID. That's hard work, okay? Doing an invite, you guys, I'm sorry, but it is not hard work. It, you can get in your own head, I'm sorry, okay? Somebody might say no, somebody might get mad at you, somebody might say something to offend you, but it's not hard, right? It, we take it personally, but we really shouldn't. So I really wanna go into, I'm gonna give you a couple tips of things that I did when I was working full time and doing all the things, like the top three tasks that I did with minimal amount of time. But I really mostly want you guys to think about why you're here. Cause you are here for a reason. You're sitting on this call with us for a reason. You're still here, whether you've been here for a week, whether you've been here for two years, you're here on this call with us. And that to me says something right there. Like, why are you here? Why are you showing up with us? Why do you come and listen to Ashley every single week, right? You have something inside you that's like eating you alive that tells you you want, you want this for yourself, right? But what is that? So that's what we were like, Ashley and I were talking, we really wanted to get into was like mindset. So the three tasks that I did, is okay if I keep going, Ashley, are you good? Do you have a question for me? Okay. <laughs> um, and you can take notes if you want to. This is like gonna be so mind blowing. Are you ready? I listened to trainings in my car. I posted on social media during my breaks, which I had like 15 minute breaks. Sometimes I wouldn't even get a lunch break because in the police department, you don't know. If you're on a call, you're on a call, you don't get to eat, doesn't matter. Okay, and I invited. That's it. That's what I did. Like I didn't do, I had Facebook and that was it. I had no Instagram back then. It didn't exist. Insta stories didn't exist. Facebook live didn't exist. I posted on social media and I invited privately. And here's the thing that I learned with doing both of those things. Okay. You would not expect a 16 year old girl or a 14 year old girl in middle school who posts on social media all day long to get paid. So why do you think posting on social media all day that you're gonna get a paycheck, right? You have to do the invites along with it. And here's the thing, if you're only doing invites and you're not posting on social media, when you invite somebody, they're gonna be like, what is she even talking about? Like, she's just trying to like sell me something, right? Because they don't see you doing it. They have no idea what you're talking about. So if you do the invites without posting on social media, it's kind of weird and awkward, okay? But if you only post on social media, it's kind of like, and I've told this story to my team before. If I posted a post on social media and I said, hey guys, I'm having my 30th birthday party at my house at six o'clock on Tuesday. I would love for you to be there, right? You might scroll Tessa and you'd be like, yeah, she's not talking to me. You'd be like, she's probably talking to like her really close friends. And Amanda would be like, yeah, I don't know Samantha that well. She's probably not like actually inviting me, right? But if I were to post that on social media and then also message you, hey, Christina, I'm having my birthday party on Sunday. I would like love it if you were there. You'd be like, oh, me? <laughs> oh, thanks. I would love to come, right? So you have to do both. They go together. You can't just post on social media. You can't just do private invites, okay? So doing those two things and trainings, that's all I did. I didn't do Facebook events. I didn't do anything fancy. I don't even think I had a tracking system back then. It was just like, I just invited and posted, invited and posted. And that was all I did. That's all I had time for. And that's all I did. Okay. So also, I don't know what your jobs are like or what you guys are doing who do work full time, but I had to be very careful with posting because being in the police department, they watched everything I did. Right. Yeah. Christine is raising her hand. I had to be very, very careful. So I never did call to actions on my social media. I just shared my journey. They can't do anything about that. They can't do anything about me saying, hey, I worked out and it made me feel really good. Like, hey, I just made this really good recipe and it was awesome. And like, it gave me a lot of energy. They can't do anything about that. I'm not, I just, 
I did not even do call to actions ever because I couldn't. So that's where the private invite came in big time. It was like, hey, I know you've been watching me do my workouts. This is how I feel. I would love to do it together. Okay. Um, so yeah, every obstacle that I had with each body, and I know Ashley and I've talked about obstacles a lot, is like, it's hard to overcome the obstacles, but compared to the obstacles in Beach Body, compared to the obstacles in the police department, are minute. Right? Like getting a no from somebody is not not even comparable to like the long hard hours or the lieutenant that I didn't get along with or getting yeast infections because I wear polyester in 80 degree weather for 12 hours a day. Like Christina's like nodding her head at me, like, oh my God, I feel you. Right? Getting reprimanded from a lieutenant like while I'm on my 21st birthday. Getting a no from somebody doesn't even compare to those kind of problems that I had in the corporate world or in the state job. Okay. So co again, coaching is not hard. Being a, a surgeon is hard. Being a first responder is hard. So get out of your own head, stop being afraid and think about like, why are you really here? Why are you here sitting here with us? And, um, one thing I want you to think about, okay. So my, my main kind of like thought tonight was why are you here? Not how you guys know how I've already said this before. You can go into the back office. You can go into onto YouTube. You show up every single week and Ashley's teaching you everything she knows, right? You know how each body coaches are way, way, way overtrained. But the one thing I do want you to figure out how, okay, is how to get out of your own head. That is the only how you guys probably aren't doing, right? And really with that is personal development. And if you are doing a personal development that everybody raves about, this is the best book in the world, but you're not resonating with it, you need to find a book or an audio or something that resonates with you, okay? Not with whatever else your team is reading, not with what the top coaches are reading, not with what Carl Deichler is reading. What is something you need to read or listen to to figure out how to get where you want to be with this, okay? Doesn't matter what Ashley's doing. Doesn't matter what I'm doing. Because Ashley and I are two totally different people. Like her obstacles and her things that she gets stuck with are two to like totally different from what I get stuck with. So you need to figure out, okay, Heather, like what are you struggling with and what are you, what do you need to read or listen to to figure out where, like how to get where you want to be with this, right? Ashley can pour all of the knowledge and all of the belief in you every single week you need to stop leaning on her and stop leaning on me, Laura and Kim. I love you. Um, but you need to figure out how to make this what you want it for yourself, right? Like Ashley technically doesn't have to do anything for you guys, right? Some top coaches, I think it's, was it Lindsay Matway? I don't remember who didn't even have an upline, like had nobody there pouring their heart and their belief and their love and their support and their knowledge into them. They had nobody. There are quite a few coaches, very successful coaches that didn't have somebody like hosting team calls every week. That didn't have somebody doing team competitions and making it really fun. And they figured out for them, like, okay, I really want this. And this is why it doesn't matter what it's going to take to get there. I'm going to figure it out and I'm going to make it happen. And that is the mindset you need to have. So I want you to think about these two things. I don't know how much time we have, but really quick in the chat. I'm sorry. I haven't looked at the chat yet. Um, yeah. Ashley Molson had no upline. Okay. Two questions I have for you and you don't have to answer these. I want you to just think about them. I'm going to post them in the chat. So here's the why, why do you want this so bad? Like, why are you sitting here with us tonight? Right. And then the how is not the logistics of how to do an invite or how to organize your invites or how to whatever, run your challenge group. I don't care about those, right? Everybody can do those differently. Your how needs to be, how can you get out of your own head and make this happen? And you are the only one that can figure that out. Ashley can't figure it out for you. I can't figure it out for you. We can do one-on-one calls until we're like parched. Okay. We, we cannot figure it out. We can help you. You only know deep down what you need to do to figure this out and to make it work and to get out of your own way. Okay. So those are the two things I want you to think about and you don't have to answer them, but you have to know them for yourself. Okay. Um, 
Is there any, I haven't looked at the chat yet, but were there any questions? Can I just jump in and be like, oh my gosh, all of, I think my just got carpal tunnel of the head from nodding so much. I don't even know if that's a thing, but it's everything you said is like, this could literally be, I mean, did anyone hear something that was completely mind blowing in what she shared? If so, cool. I'm glad you got a nugget, but some of you are, most of you are probably like, oh, it's just my why. And then it's just the vitals. Samantha wanted so badly to get out of a job that required her to be certain places at certain times that when this business was presented to her, she just did the things, right? And similarly, whether you hit the ground running the day you signed up to be a coach or not, anyone has that opportunity to say, okay, like, I'm just going to do the things, right? Um, I think that is so, 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 so key because like you said, there are so many takeaways just in those, that little segment, but I can't, you know, I can have a one-on-one -on -one with Aaron or Heather, or man, and I can be like, what is it? I believe in you. And I do like as human beings, I truly believe in you because we are all created equal and we all have similar opportunities in life that we're willing to work for. I can't answer the why for you. Right. And I think it's also like a why shifts over time. Smith and I have been at this for years and years. Her why for starting is vastly different than her why now. I know personally, one of her big goals this past year was to buy a house. And she's been able to do that with her income, income disclaimer, if anyone's watching this recording, you know, through her hard work and her true grind as a business owner. It doesn't mean that she quit her jobs the day she became a coach. She, still earned income to pay her bills. She was also using every pocket of time that she had in that hustle season to be able to one day work less in a job that she didn't love, to one day have the freedom to show up when she chose to show up because she always came back to her vitals. Um, I love this. There's just so many things that, that I wanted to say, but I don't know if you wanna move on or if you had another thing you wanted to share. My biggest thing is always back to mindset you know, you've obviously had obstacles just as I have had in this business. What has kept you coming back and continuing to hit success club each month to grow your team? I'm sure you've had coaches cancel. Like I have, I'm sure you've had unexpected things come up in your business. How did you keep going forward even through tough times in your business? Honestly, it was the fear of having to go back to the police department. <laughs> I will do anything to not have to go back to a corporate job like that. I'm over it. I don't ever want to do it again. Um, I don't want to have a boss. I don't want, I feel so spoiled doing Beachbody. Not to mention on top of that, I know for a fact that I can earn as much as you're making or as much as other higher coaches, you know, higher than me that are making. And I'm like, I wouldn't be able to earn that. There's no way I would be able to earn that in a corporate job. And I have big freaking dreams. So like, I want a beach house on the beach and a second house here in Albuquerque. And I want to go like half the year here, there, half the year here. So it's like, yes, those are goals, but this is like a, a dream that I've had for my entire life. And if I were to go back to a corporate job or any other job for that matter, like there's no way that that would even be possible. And yeah, it's basically the fear of having to go back to the corporate world. Cause I just don't ever want to do it again. So I'll do what it takes because... <laughs> I'm good. I don't want to do it. I love it. That's totally, I know we had a couple of people drop in the chat, like that's mine and me. And some people, you know, I think I will speak for the majority of my team when I do think most of their end goals is to get out or at least lower their hours at their full-time job. And I can speak to that because they have told me that personally, right? Some people love their job. We're not saying you have to quit your job and go be a beach body coach. But what we are saying is this, this business is extremely legitimate to give you options in life that a traditional corporate job is what a 2% raise per year. And there's nothing wrong with that, but 2020 hit some of our team hard and they realized that their very secure jobs were no longer secure. And I think who are we not to go after? And first off, building your income is just directly tied to helping more people. Like that's why I think it's not selfish to want to earn more of a paycheck because it means you're changing more lives. Um, and so I know for my type A logistical people out there, which I am one of them, obviously it's all about mindset. The answer is always your why. Do you have any kind of system? Obviously now you are a full-time coach. Um, and I know for me, the transition was actually hard. I was more effective when I had my three part-time jobs and was really hustling, but are there things that you have like in terms of a plan where are you inviting to the business each day? Are you inviting to your groups based on people who watch your stories? Like you're clearly still inviting every day. Where does that come from and how, I mean, what's your system to help your minimum amount of people every month? Honestly, I use the Josh Coates tracker. 
which is the same track. Are you guys using that tracker? They're using similar, we're using a specific like 31 strong tracker for August, but it's similar to what's on yeah. the Dropbox tracker. Yeah, that's, I just use that tracker. That's all. I mean, yeah, I invite like, okay. So the other day I actually reached out to Ashley because I was struggling with doing coach invites, which she was too. And so you guys, she wouldn't have known that if I didn't go to her, by the way, like she would not have known that. So quick tip is if you need something or you need help with something, speak up because we are not mind readers, right? If you need help with something, please reach out to us. If you want a one-on-one, reach out to us, right? Um, so I actually told her, I was like, I'm struggling with this. And then with this, she was like, oh, me too. Let's get in a chat together and let's work on it together. Okay. So we created a little tiny itty bitty coach chat or yeah, chat to invite to coaching. Right. And the other day it was Friday. I had said I was going to do 15 invites per week. Okay. When I say something, I do it. That's just how I am. Um, and I didn't hit that. And I was struggling on Friday. I was like, I don't even know who to invite right now. Like I was scrolling social media. I was stuck in my own head. I was like, this girl has nothing. Like I just could not figure out who to invite. Okay. So what I did was I took, um, I organized my people. I'm so OCD and like type A. Okay. I organized all my Facebook friends in lists by their birthdays. So like January, February, March, April, very <laughs> OCD. Okay. So I created an event invite for coaching and I invited three. So I did May, June, July and birthdays. And it was like three or 400 people. I don't even know. Right. And I think I had seven or eight people already click on going. And I was like, boom. Okay. So for this week, there's already seven or eight invites done. So even though I didn't hit my 15 invites last week, I set myself up for success this week. I was like, what do I need to do to figure out how to do it? Right. Um, so I think that the, the thing I want you guys to know is like, if you really want it and you really set a goal, you will figure out how to do it. Like figure it out, figure out how to make it happen. Um, and in fact, I think even one of the girls on the national wake up call said that she was like, was it not, it was two weeks ago, or, not this Monday, but the Monday before that she was like, I just figured out, like, if I didn't hit success club, I would do a hundred invites until I got somebody and made it happen. Like, Oh no, that was the body angle one. Yeah. Did they, did you guys watch that video? So good. Sorry. Okay. Got sidetracked, but did I answer your question? Ashley? <laughs> yes, you did. Yeah. That was the body angle call. I did share that in my, our 31 strong group message where she interviewed a, her coach who went elite for the first time. And I mean, you're, you're similar in personalities, right? Cause she's like, I just, I just figured it out. Like my upline said, hit success club and help at least three people a month. So I, so I figured out how to do it. And, and the thing I think is hard sometimes with this business, whether you've been doing it for a month or two years is, well, how many invites do I need to send? How many, how do I not feel weird about connection to invite? The answer is, I don't know. The answer is I can give you advice all day long. I always say, be a human in your inbox and be intentional in your stories and your social media. Like Samantha just said, she needed a way to talk to more people about this business. So she created an event and correct me if I'm wrong of people that you have been already like sort of engaging with them because it was their birthday. So she organizes people into Facebook lists, which is something I used to do. I haven't done that in a while, um, based on their upcoming birthday. And I think she might pre-engage with them. And when it's their actual birthday, she can give them a message because she's already been sort of engaging with them. I do it on a smaller level, like within a week of their birthday, she's just more intentional about it, which is awesome. Similarly, you guys create a Facebook event, right? You guys do birthday messages. What if you invited everyone to your upcoming se September wellness club and you create a Facebook event and you invited 400 people? Why not? Right. And then what if, you, this is what I used to do back like five years ago. Like why the heck not? If you're not at success club right now, time to try some stuff, time to try some stuff. You could create an event and you could simply kind of pre preview your September group or my September group, if you're in my group, and you could invite those people that you have been engaging with the last month or two months. Right. And you could send everyone an invite. And then if they, even if they don't respond to the invite, I used to message these people and say, Hey, just a heads up, kind of like what you were saying, Samantha, with, with like the 30th birthday thing. Right. I'm like, I just want to let you know, I sent you an an event invite about this thing I have coming up next month. I thought, you know, you might be interested in learning more. If not, no worries, but I didn't just randomly send this to you. I wanted to be sure you got the invite. You know, that is an invite, right? And I think sometimes we're like, no, but I have to go through the process of liking her dog's pictures. You don't, because if you are yourself and you're genuine and people know what you're about on your social, they know you work out. 
they know you have a business or they should know that you have a business that's rooted in helping people. And then it's, it's, I always say, if you're really intentional, it's weird if you don't invite, right? Because some of you guys are like, I'm just not inviting enough because I'm scared. Well, let's get, let's get down to it. What are we scared of? I'm scared of someone telling me I'm salesy. I'm scared of someone saying something mean to me, or I'm scared that no one will join. Well, no one's going to join if, if we don't invite, right? And, and the perspective that you put, like, I, I mean, I couldn't even chills thinking about what you've been through as a police officer. That stuff is hard. If we are being genuine in really wanting to help people, what we do is not hard. It would be hard if we're like creepily trying to just make money off of someone like that would be hard and that would be weird, but we're just trying to go ahead. So this is for everybody. And I want you guys to write it in the chat. When your upline or the person that is your sponsor coach, when they invited you, how did you feel? I don't care what they said, but how did you feel when they actually sent you the invite? That's what I want to know in the chat. I want you guys to type it really quick. Cause for me, I'm sweating. <laughs> You're sweating. For me, when Ashley, or not Ashley, when Sarah invited me, I was like honored. I was like, are you kidding? You think I would be, good? what, me? You think I would be good at this? Yeah, Brandy says I felt so special. We have yes, some have to be honest. I want to know. Christina got the warm and the fuzzies. Excited and interested. Did anybody feel gross? I mean, if you did, would you even be here? <laughs> so what makes you think when you send an invite that they're going to be pissed off or offended? I'm grateful that Ashley was assigned my coach. I was nervous, but also really excited. Okay. It was the exact moment. Tessa, why though? Like, how did you feel? A caveat, I was not the person that invited Amanda for six months. She, she had a canceled coach and I'm so glad that I met Amanda, but that happened. Yeah. Connected and excited to do something with my friend. So none of you guys felt like you were being sold to. No, none of you guys got pissed off and like started attacking Ashley. Right. I didn't feel attacked. So why are you afraid to invite? Like, what if you sent an invite and you made somebody else feel warm and fuzzy? You made somebody else feel connected and excited. You made somebody else know that, like, this is what they needed to change their life. I mean, yeah, you're going to get some people that ghost you. Who cares? You're going to get some people that just say, no, it's not for them. Cool. But what if you get, like, that one person that is gets the warm and the fuzzies? And then you become freaking best friends. And then you go to Punta Cana together. And then you make thousands of dollars together. I think I looked at my back office and I've officially hit like more than $150,000. And I was just like, what? Like what? Yeah. All because freaking Sarah, after I found her on YouTube. Okay. I friended her on Facebook. She's a Zumba instructor and I was a Zumba instructor. Okay. And she invites me cold invites me right away. And I was honored. Why? I don't know. I didn't even know the girl. Like she was a random YouTuber. And I signed up and she is literally now my best friend in the world, right? Not even kidding. Like she knows every detail, probably more than my therapist, right? We traveled all around the world together. We've done Zumba together. Like she's my best friend all because she was not afraid to invite me. So like, what if you're doing somebody a disservice by not inviting them because you're afraid? It's kind of selfish right? Like if you really think about it, it's kind of selfish. Like you could really change, I don't know, Amy's like, I'm just thinking of her random name, Amy's life, but you were too scared to invite her. But this is really what she needs. Like this has been her calling and she's just waiting and you're too scared to invite her. Get out of your own way. Those girls that you want are out there. Like the girls, the dream coach that you want on your team is out there, but you haven't invited her because you're what scared of what giving somebody warm and fuzzy feelings, <laughs> right? Like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. I love that. And it's the exact same thing, no matter what you're inviting to, I think everyone on the team 
is probably honest if they're like, I don't invite to this business enough. Like it's enough, it's hard enough for me to invite to my bod group, but it's the same thing. It's the same thing. If the only caveat I will say is if it's coming from a place of genuine, I believe in this and I just want more people to experience this. You do that. And I don't even ever need to give you a template in the world because your, your genuineness of I I'm on this health journey and I'm also on a journey with other women of growing my mindset and growing other dreams. If that's intentional on your social media and you feel like this would honestly bless someone's life, that's all you need, you guys. Raise your hand if this has blessed your life. I know there's some not on video, but raise your camera. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Do you guys have it? I and mean, we can go on too. We've got, um, we've got about 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes left, but do you guys have any specific questions for Samantha? Um, success club, all-star legend. I mean, she hits it every month. She grows her team. She's one star diamond in two business centers. She's been able to achieve financial stability with this business. I mean, it's, it's very, very inspiring. And even though like, yes, I've achieved similar things, I am just as inspired by her drive as I am. Like anyone that's all in, in this business inspires me. Because I know you're going to hit obstacles and I know you're, but someone said something the other week and it's like, if you keep going with this, the downsides get a little bit shorter lived and the better parts of this business get bigger and more frequent. And that's so true. That's so true. Do you want to be my best and go to Punta Cana? <laughs> but it's true. It's true. You guys, I mean, you guys know who you guys develop a friendship with me when you stay in this and you lean in, you work harder. I don't play favorites and pick and choose who I want to be best friends with. I genuinely develop relationships with people who are grinding like I am because we got a lot to talk about and we genuinely connect over a lot of things because we are mentally all in. Um, whether they're with me forever or not, like if we can be on the same wavelength now, let's go. And then you develop like friendships out of it. I love okay. it. No questions are popping up. Tell me your biggest fear when it comes to coaching. Like what, what's the one thing that stops you from doing invites? You mean when they invite people, when they invite people to the business or just invites in general? Either. Your fear is building a team? Bree? Where are you? Do you mean like not being able to help and support a team? Ask, yeah, oh, elaborate. Yeah. But I won't be able to help them. Stephanie, elaborate how, help them how. Bree, okay, so Bree is afraid to ask people to join to build a team, but why? What are you afraid, like, what are you afraid that what's gonna happen? that people will think I'm a fraud. Okay, write in the chat what a fraud is. I want everybody to answer this. What is a fraud? Not being a good enough coach for them. Okay, we'll go over that in a second. Fake, okay. Someone who doesn't do what they say they'll do. Someone who lies about, okay, are you lying? Are you fake? So if they think you're a fraud, but you're not, do you really care what they think? You know, deep down, this is where personal development comes in. You have to know that you are a good person deep down and that you're doing the right thing, no matter what anybody else thinks. If your intentions are pure, who cares if somebody calls you a fraud? Because you know you're not. Like, we are not frauds on this team. I'm sorry, but we are not. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna be real honest. I'm not going to be taken seriously because I used to do another company that ended up with being the Hey Girl Everyone Hates. Okay. Um, Bailey, I had a girl on my team, Amanda, who was on a team prior to my team and her upline coach had her doing that. And it was with Beachbody. So it was still the same MLM, right? And her upline was like, she had to send out like 60 Hey Girl messages a day. And she felt so gross. She quit. It took me a year to, I kept following up with her that she finally signed up on my team. And she was like, this is a whole different ball game. Like she genuinely, she has zero scripts, right? She genuinely messages people. So I was actually on a zoom work session with her. Like we were on zoom inviting together 
And she found one of her Hey Girl messages that she sent somebody from like three years ago. And she was going to invite the girl and she was like, oh my God, I cannot believe I sent this message. So guess what she did? She voice memoed that girl. And she was like, hey, I know I sent you that message three years ago and it was absolutely disgusting. And I just wanted to say, I'm sorry. Like I was in a weird place in my life. I was like learning how to do this thing. Um, so I just wanted to apologize. Like if I ever made you feel gross or anything like that, she genuinely from her heart apologized. And I watched her while we were working and she was crying. Like you do not have to be that person. And it's okay. If you've done that in the past, you can come back from that and show people who you really are. Right. Um, okay. I have so many guys on my friends list and I feel like beach body resonates more with women. Not necessarily. One thing I learned from Scotty Hobbs is he's a top elite male coach. Okay. He calls every female customer or person that he's talking to sister. So I actually learned that from him and any guy that I've talked to, I call them brother. Um, and it immediately sets the tone of like respect of friendship of there's going to be no weirdness. In fact, one of my best guy clients, his name was Yoshi. He actually won the $1,000 from the, from the Beachbody um, challenge. And he also entered in the Beachbody physique competition. And I just immediately right off the bat called him brother. Hey, brother. And it just set the tone. So if you guys, if you feel like you resonate with guys, sign up guys, right? It doesn't matter, guy or girl. Um, but yeah, I would definitely set that tone with them just to make sure no weirdness happens in your team. Okay. All right. I'm, we've got a couple minutes left and I think first off, I feel like this was church. So thank you for our service. I mean, I just love, I really want to hear your, your kind of like final thing on like, do you know, if, could you speak for a minute on where your life would be if you hadn't said yes to Sarah? Like, have you ever gone down that path? Cause I do sometimes and it's like, it immediately puts this into perspective that I have more work to do every day all the time, literally every day. Like, I'm not even kidding when I say every day, I, it does a day doesn't go by that. I think if Sarah didn't invite me and if I said no, where I would be right now, and I would still probably be in the police department. I would be waking up at 4 30 AM. I would be having yeast infections from the stupid polyester pants. I would be being reprimanded by my Lieutenant constantly. Um, my income I like, I can't even tap on that because I was so broke, um, that I was putting gas and groceries, like necessities on credit cards. And my credit cards were growing so much that I ended up in $33,000 debt from necessities. That wasn't even from like splurging. Okay. And beach body income, beach body income, income disclaimer. Um, I paid off all $33,000 debt. I just bought a house two months ago. I travel all over the world with nobody reprimanding me while I travel, right? I can wake up when I want to wake up. I cannot even fathom the idea of doing anything else ever. Like I am forever a lifer in this business and I don't have a why or like a reason that'll make me cry. It pushes me and fires me up to like want to go even, fur even further with this. It's like, I am determined not to go back to that life that was so freaking miserable. Like I was depressed. I was thin. I knew nothing about health. I was insecure because I was always being barked at by bosses or higher ups. Right. I have grown so much to be who I am. And just to know that like, I'm making a difference in, in other people's lives other than picking up dead bodies off the road is like a game changer. I will never go back. And so I don't know if you guys have ever, ever read GoPro, but he's like, will you be the coach that's here a year from now? And I was like, that's going to be me a hundred percent. And I say that every single year at summit, I'm like, I'm going to be the one that's going to be here again next year and the next year and the next year. Cause I don't want to go back. Right. I just don't GoPro by Eric Worre. So, so, so good. I think I've listened to that book 15 times. So good. if you haven't listened to that book, it's definitely something you need to listen to. Well, okay. I, I feel like, thank you. I mean, I just feel like that's what we all need, right? Because we can talk tactics all day long. And yes, there is a space for that in this business. There really is. But what Samantha shared tonight is like, 
that's why she's here. I think she signed up in 2014. So seven years of being in this business and literally like, not even that, that she's here a year from now, she's here and thriving a year from now. You could be signed up a year from now and be super checked out of your business, right? Be here and be showing up today, tomorrow, day 365. And I promise you guys, like you're going to grow. You're going to grow. What did you do? Your workouts. Like if you fake your workouts for a full year, <laughs> where are you going to be in a year? Like it probably won't be much stronger. Like you can't fake it, right? Just like your workouts, you show up for a full freaking year. You're physically going to be a lot different. Same thing with your business. You just do one thing every single day and the compound effect is going to be insane. So like Ashley said, like actually be in it. Quit just checking off the boxes and like be here with us. Okay. Okay. <laughs> No, I, I love it. It's like, and you don't have anything to prove to us, right? If Samantha's your upline, if I am, you don't have anything to prove to us. And that's why people come to me like, I don't want to disappoint you. It's like, this is your life, right? I am just here to match your pace and match your belief and probably breathe more belief into you than you realize right now, but eventually you will. That's our job as your mentors. And that's going to be your job as you grow a team too. And I think this was just so needed because it's mindset. You can have a different life. You really can. Something has held you back from this point. Something maybe in months past or in a year past that said, I haven't reached that goal. I, I can't. Success club's hard. No one wants to be a coach. I haven't signed up a coach in eight years. Okay. Well, you could tonight and you could tomorrow, right? Some of you guys are letting your past like define your future in this business before you've even really gotten started. Some of you are letting that one person that canceled or mentally fell off affect your business. You're not living their life, you guys. So yeah, I think I've probably had similar three or five over the years. But if I had if I had stopped when they stopped, my husband would have had to go back to work. I would have had to put my babies in daycare. And I'm unwilling to do that. I'm unwilling to, to take my kids somewhere else. I'm unwilling to make my husband go back to a career that drains him. I'm unwilling. So my pain point is not like, like makes me, you know, cry or what it does, but it's like, I'm fighting because the pain point of what would have to be different in my life is too great. I love my life, how it is so much right now. Try to take it away from me. August might be slow. Watch me. I'm going to help more people because this life that I have built means so much to me. And you guys just, you're just a couple steps behind. You just haven't seen the things that have come to fruition yet. And that's what you're fighting for. I'm fighting to keep it and see how far I can go. I know Samantha's, we're at the same page with, let's see how far we can go. Okay. Cause life is short. You guys got one opportunity. You're here. You tuned in tonight for a reason, or you're watching this recording for a reason. And it's your time. You can get out of your head any moment and not let other people's reactions define what you're going to do tonight before your head hits the pillow or when you wake up tomorrow, but please do personal development before you jump into social media. Okay. We are at the hour. Um, thank you so much, Samantha. Hang on for just a second. I'm going to end the recording and we can do our boomerang 